what's up, Super Truckers? It's uh, Christian over here at Voyager coming at you today with uh, a little something different and dynamic. Uh, I took a recruiting call earlier today, and uh, we're going to just dissect this phone call and, and kind of see, kind of show you what happens on this side of the fence as a recruiter and uh, gives you a good little bit of insight and perhaps uh, helps you be a little bit stronger to improve your business. But uh, without further ado, here we go. Hello? Hi, good morning. My name is Christian Martinez with Voyager Nation. I had a missed call from this number. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody called me yesterday. I think I had a missed call. Okay, what's your name, sir? Put in a, an application for uh, for owner operator position. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, I was just kind of reaching out to see what you might be looking for. You know, I see you have a, a, a 2006. I uh, just uh, we do drive in, no reefer, no hazmat, no flatbed. Uh, just kind of picking your brain to see what you might be looking for, what's not working out where you are, how come you're looking, just kind of that stuff. Okay. Um, I live in Palm Coast, close to between uh, Jacksonville and Daytona. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find something. I usually, I mean, I, I done pretty much, when I used to live in Michigan, I done Michigan, Texas. And back it was it was not like a dedicated but sort of a dedicated. And uh, I'm trying to find something like it's from Florida towards west towards uh, Texas in the area and back to Florida. We're from here to Alabama. We're going towards it. Then we're back to Florida. Okay. So so what kind of what kind of home time are you looking for? All right, my people, so right there through that through the basic conversation so far before we dive into that home time, we've I've already identified that the individual is more than likely looking for some guaranteed consistency that's going to be on the dedicated lanes. All right, so uh, if you notice it, his home is Florida. He's talking a lot about, about Texas. He lived up in that Michigan area, coming down and up. But notice he mentioned Texas a lot of times. So where this conversation, in my opinion, is leading is to that consistency of the dedicated work, uh, if you want to call that consistent, but let's keep playing. Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't want to stay too much on the road either. I, I usually go for about a week, a week and a few days. Yeah, because cause here's how I do it. I, I mean, I'm, I do, I'm going to chase the money. I chase spot market. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get you know the best, the best money onto the truck as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 100% owner operator, so I'm not entangled with dedicated lanes or customer freight like that because then I would have to always force you to do that because I have to satisfy the customer. Right now, my customer is the owner operator. Um, so if you told me, hey, Christian, I need to be home every Friday night or early Saturday morning, that's fine. Florida, we leave on Monday. It don't matter the rates. We just get out. Nobody's getting rich leaving Florida. Nobody's retiring off of that. That's the market. In a little bit, it's going to be produce. From there, it's going to get a little bit better. But when we come back in, it's going to go down a little bit. That's just the economy. That's how it works. I don't control the market. I don't pretend to control the market. What we do is we establish a working relationship with you where I don't force dispatch. Some of my guys are out for a week. Some of my guys are out for a month and a half. It all depends on what you want to make. What you put in is what you get out. You know what I mean? My guys that are home on the weekend, they're not making what over-the-road guys are making. You know, I had guys that grossed 4500 last week because they want to be home, and I got guys that did 6000 because they're over the road. It just depends on what you need and what works for you. Um, so, you know, but again, it, it might be Texas, but if leaving Dallas is a dollar $1.10, why would I send you to Dallas? Why don't we change it up, man? Let's do Alabama to Indy, Indy, drop you back down. And if we can make more money, that's the formula. Uh, I just, as long as I'm getting you home back by that Friday night, if that's the plan, then we're just going to go get that money. Obviously, I'm not going to send you to Oregon because I'll never get you back in time. So, I, you know what I mean? You're kind of stuck to a different pattern. But, um, but it's that open-minded adaptability. So I don't know if that's something you're looking for or more of that dedicated, like you're doing the same thing all the time. So, uh, you know, I don't know if I can help. Yeah, I see. Uh, so what about the lanes? Do, do, I mean, like, let's say, do you have to go uh, towards uh, South Carolina or is it uh, like a dispatch 
Well, I got a load in South Carolina, or I got a load, you got to pick up that load. Or, or can you choose your pattern, where do you want to go towards? All right, so let me stop it right there, uh, right when he said choose your pattern, and he mentioned South Carolina. So, so far in this conversation, originally we identified that he's, he, he, he did a lane before, consistent lane. He's out of Florida now, he's looking to do this lane. I then dropped in and what we can offer here at Voyager, which is, um, you know, that spot market work, adaptability and creativity. A lot of you guys have heard, heard, heard us mention that before. He covered his home time, how he, he wanted to be out for a week and come back. I covered over how we can get him back for that Friday night, Saturday morning. So we kind of check off on that home time. It's what it's looking for. And then he said, can you commit and, and can you pick your lanes? Again, we're revisiting. He's always coming back to that dedicated, right? And then this is kind of where we shift gears a little bit, right? You got to be careful because some recruiters are there are going to pick up on that and not do the right thing and not explain to you what can happen. Can I get him to Texas and back to Florida? Absolutely, not a problem, all day long. But what I wouldn't, what, what they're not willing to tell you is what kind of, I can give you the work you want, but what kind of implication does that mean to you financially? Will you be successful financially at doing that maneuver? Other places may string you along once they hook you off of the lane that they can give you. You fail to talk about the finances because you're so excited that you found something dedicated in the areas that you want it. Because remember, throughout this whole conversation, everything to South Carolina, I'm, I'm telling them I wouldn't take you out west, Oregon, or uh, anything out here because I wouldn't be able to get you back on time. So I'm, I'm even telling you what I wouldn't do to make you fail, but he keeps coming back to that to that home time. So again, uh, this is this is part of the dialogue and you know, um, let's hear a little bit more. This is not a, like a dedicated, it, it's not a, it depends. I, I mean, if, if South Carolina is the money and that's where it's paying, like leaving South Carolina, mm -hmm. then we're going to say that's the money. But if you're telling me, let's go Texas, and the money isn't in Texas, and I agree, as long, then what happens when you open your check and there's no money to pay the bills? Or it's not enough that's money? True. Now you're mad at yeah. me? Be, but you were happy when I agreed with you to do it because that's what you wanted. But then when you get the money, it's not what you want. So uh, that's that's where I get disconnected. You know what I mean? W yeah. We'll put options. We can say, hey, we can do a South Carolina or we can get something into, you know, uh, Alabama or we can do, who knows, maybe somebody went to Pennsylvania to Ohio, come back. It, and that's where the money is in that area. As much as you want to go to Texas, if the money's not there, it's not there. So, you know, I, I do need adaptability. you got to be able to switch it around in order to, again, make your financial goals. Because that's what we're here for, is to make that money. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but, so you would have to be open to that. Okay. Well, the only thing is I don't want to do my, like, my uh, restart on the road. I want to do it home, you know. No, but they can always do, like, let's say, okay, let's get you from here, you know, let's get you coming back in. Uh, maybe you don't even deliver, you, you deliver, you deliver either Friday night or early Saturday morning. All right, so a little bit about that. So, again, um, kind of, I, I kind of spun a little bit about the Southeast, keeping them dynamically interchangeable, adaptable in this area. However... My well, man just keeps coming back to what I, I, I need that home time. So that tells me that he's looking for this dedicated because you can probably hit two runs in Texas and then probably do a local run and be home for the weekend. He's probably been burnt in the past and accepted whatever was given and then somebody dropped the ball on getting him home. So in my opinion right now, again, it's an assumption. That's kind of where this conversation is going because he's not letting that go, right? He's... He's, he's very much adamant about him wanting the, those dedicated lanes. Or you don't even deliver. You sit on the load for Monday delivery in Jacksonville at 9 a.m. And then you got to reload leaving. You know what I mean? So they'll get you home to do your 34. That's not the problem. Okay. I see your point. Yeah, well, okay, I see what you're saying. Uh... 
Well, it doesn't sound bad, but I have a different application. And then if nothing happens within two, three days, I'll probably call you guys back and go forward yeah, with the application. It, yeah, just just give us some thought, man, because I, I, I'm, you know, one of the things here, I'd rather be honest. I would hate to waste your time, my time. It just, it, nobody wins. Like, I'm not going to lie to you to bring you here and then it's not what I said. And so I'd rather that, you know, I give you the truth. If it works, cool. Yeah, if it I doesn't, appreciate maybe, it because... maybe a little, you know, maybe down the line we can do some business. But but I'd rather give I, you honesty, you know. I really appreciate it. You're pretty much you're honest from the beginning because I've been through some companies from Michigan. I lived in and I went to Illinois and I got to the orientation and they changed me upside down. They said, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. And I went there for nothing. You know, I just went back home and. I didn't even finish the orientation because they were not on us from the beginning. But I appreciate what you're telling me because now I know what to focus on. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So there you go, guys. Um, in several different companies, how you how, where you put that call, whether it's a win or a loss, um, depends where you work, point of view. Here at Origination, man, I'm going to say that that's a win because both parties won here, right? We identified, we identified the need. He was very forthcoming on that, and we didn't lead this guy into trouble. We didn't lead him into a false expectation. We didn't onboard him under false expectations. It's just both our business parameters are a little bit different right now today. Doesn't mean that things can, won't change. They may in the future, and it's important to leave that open door. But again, we won because we're not wasting his time and his money, and we're not wasting our time and our money as well. It's okay to disagree, Right now, it's it's important that we go separate ways because he even said it on his call that uh, on, on there that he's been to orientation and had to get up and walk out. And again, guys, that's that's the purpose of this. You know, we're not here to do that. And what happens is these bigger companies, if that recruiter is out there and he's incentivized and he's driven because of the number of people he or she has to onboard on a weekly basis. That's going to determine what that individual is telling the, the owner operator, what's actually available and what the disconnect, it, it, the disconnect after onboarding is going to be so distant and so far that, that everybody is getting burnt. Yeah, I mean, even if a guy is onboarded under false pretenses and operation isn't aware of the situation, now there's a level of chaos and frustration from the operations team because they're going to say, who is this guy? Who promised this guy a dedicated lane to Texas and make that kind of money? Right? So that's how things start to fall apart and, and, and aggravation and tensions rise. So again, uh, this is just kind of a phone call. I'm looking to bring one of these, uh, another of these phone calls maybe with a different outcome. I'll bring that to you guys next week. Um, it's just kind of a bird's eye view into what happens in the world of recruiter. That's just again, one simple, one simple call. If there's any kind of questions you guys may have, please hit us up on the podcast on Thursdays at two o'clock. Uh, any kind of questions are welcome, whether they're for recruiter, operations, dispatcher, or safety. So once again, guys, drive safe out there. We out.